So I've got some really awesome news today for Commodore Amiga fans. We have just had the release of Pi Amiga 4 by Chris Edwards. And the link's going to be in my description for the latest version of Pi Amiga 4. Now the really awesome feature with this is that this is no longer exclusively for Raspberry Pi. But this release is actually going to be for AMD and Intel CPUs. As well of course stay with the ARM setup processor such as uh, Raspberry Pi. So what has Pi Mega 4 got? To be truthful as a record in this part right now, I know it's an improvement. I know that it's got a Mega game selector inside and I know it's also got Mega AGS in it. So it's got several new features and updates and everything else. So what we're going to do is also look at how to set this up and how to get this started on your Intel or AMD PC rather than going down the route I used a little while back on using Oracle VirtualBox to run this on Windows. So first of all, you're going to need to download Pi Mega 4 and you're going to end up with a archive. So the archive itself is just under 35 gigabyte. And once you've extracted this archive, 96 gigabytes. So a substantial size compared with Pi Mega 3. So that just speaks volumes that this image has a hell of a lot more. So same situation as previous Pi Migos. We do need a kickstart ROM to power this. So you can grab this from Amiga Forever, which I'm always celebrating. I think Amiga Forever is a superb system to use. If you go to Amiga Forever just here, you can get the Value Edition, Plus Edition, and Premium Edition. Once you've got your legal purchase Kickstart ROMs, you can use these Kickstart ROMs for WinUA, FSUA. In other words, once you've got these Kickstart ROMs, the world is your oyster. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so the next thing we're going to need to do then is obviously grab some software to flash the image onto. So we got a choice here between Bellina Etcher, which is a very cool flashing software, and we've also got Raspberry Pi OS, or Raspberry Pi Imager, shall I say. Now, according to Chris Edwards, who created Pi Mega 4, he does recommend Bellina Etcher. Uh, he says that it's actually faster. So the choice is yours. Link's gonna be in my description for either of these uh, flashing softwares. I'm gonna download Etcher, and I'm going to go for the Etcher for Windows x 8664 portable version. I don't want to install this, so just download. Now, while that's downloading, uh, like I say, we do need the Kickstart ROM. And your Kickstart ROM for Pi Amiga needs to be named exactly how I've got it here on my desktop. So it's going to be titled Kick31 a1200 dot rom now there's a good likelihood if you purchase these kickstart roms from amiga forever just grab yourself the a1200 rom uh, version 3.1 and you're good to go just make sure it's actually named how i've got it here otherwise this isn't going to work okay so i've just downloaded blina etcher portable if i double left click and here we go so we're now inside etcher and what we need to do first is flash from file what this is asking is it wants to know where the Pi Mega 4 image is. And of course, as we see, it's on the desktop just here. So if I go to desktop and I find the image through this, double left click. Next thing we're going to see is select target. So this is, of course, asking us where it needs to be flashed to. So for this, I'm going to be using a SanDisk Ultra 128 gigabyte micro SD card. If I just plug this one into my computer. So as it says, SDXC card. So if this doesn't show with the micro SD cards that you want to use, just go to change and just make sure the correct card is selected. We're then going to go to flash. And that's it then. So yes, this is going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so once you finish flashing your SD cards with Pi Mega 4, what you need to do next is actually remove your micro SD cards from your computer, and we're just going to eject it and then pop it back in. Okay, so first of all, you're going to see lots of files here. We're going to ignore that for now. The folder that we need to look at is titled Kick, and you can find that at the top. If we just go into that Kick folder, and this is where that Kickstart ROM 3.1 ROM comes into place. If we just drag this into that Kick folder, and that's it. So we're pretty much good to go. So just eject your micro SD card from your computer. 
Okay, so just like the other night with my Pi Mega 3 setup guide, I'm also going to be using my Raspberry Pi 400, which is the absolute definitive experience allegedly for modern day Amiga gaming. So I've just popped my micro SD card into the back of this. And just bear in mind, this is also going to be compatible with the original Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm going to just power my Pi 400 on and we're going to see some action. So the first thing you're going to see is a load of Linux text come up on the sides just here. And here we go. So we're currently booting up Pi Mega 4 for the first time. And here we go. Now, in this case, I'm getting an error screen which says could not load system ROM, trying Aros ROM replacement. Sometimes that can happen. As we know, we put the Kickstart ROM into the kick folder just a minute ago before putting this into the Raspberry Pi. So in this case, is this what you get? You just go to OK, OK again. And I'm going to access the Amiberry menu. Just remember that Pi Mega is ran with Amiberry in the background. So what we need to do then for this is press the FN key on your Raspberry Pi 400, if that's what you're using, and F2 simultaneously. Now, if you're using a Raspberry Pi 4 and you're using a conventional keyboard, then obviously you've got the F12 key on there to use, but on smaller micro keyboards like this, there's always going to be an additional button to press. And in this case, the F12 button is actually located on F2. So a multi-purpose function button so anyways, what we need to do then is actually load our ROM file into the correct place. So if we access this Amiberry menu just here, if we go to main ROM file at the top, you'll find that your Kickstart ROM version 3.1 is on there. So what we're going to do is just left click on that. And what I advise doing is just then go to configurations and actually saving that configuration. So next time you boot up Pi Mega 4, you won't need to do this every time. So what we're gonna do next is actually look at, at connecting a controller. Now, I'm not gonna collect a controller. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you go to input, and from input, you'll find port zero, port one. Now, you need a system mouse. Some games for Amiga, as you know, are gonna require a mouse such as Cannon Fodder, Simon the Sorcerer, Secret of Monkey Island. The one you need to focus on is port one. If you drop this down, once you've got your Bluetooth controller connected, you should see this. And I demonstrated that in my Pi Mega 3 uh, guides the other day, literally a couple of days ago. So that's how you get your controller working. And just remember to save your settings. So once you've configured or rather chosen your controller for port one, just remember to go configurations and just save it. So what we're going to do next is actually go to reset. And here we go. So after applying that Kickstart ROM file into the correct place, we now boot straight into Pi Mega 4. Very cool stuff with a very nice desktop wallpaper. So just like Pi Mega 3, it looks like we've got all the same drives just here. So we're going to have a demos drive. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, we've also got in place a games drive. Now, just like Pi Mega 3, these games just here are going to require additional files, uh, such as Doom and Jute Nukem 3D. So I'm not testing all these out. Like I said at the start of the video, literally, this is the first time I'm powering this on. And so far, I'm pretty impressed. I love Commodore, as many of you are aware. So other things we can do, like I said, this has also got Game Selector. So what we're going to do to enter Game Selector, a very easy way to do this, is going into that Amiberry menu again. So if you're running a Pi 400, FN plus F2 together. Okay, so let's go to Amiga Game Selector. If I double left click on Amiga Game Selector, it's just gonna reboot and that should then take us into Amiga Game Selector. And here we go. So Amiga Game Selector is obviously also available on the A500 Mini and exactly the same as this and it's really awesome. So we can access our games through this menu selection just here. As you know, I've not got a controller connected to this, um, but I can actually use my cursor keys. And from here, we got games under by theme, by system, by publisher. If 
If I go to Publisher, press Enter to go into that menu, this is all of the publishers for Commodore Amiga. So obviously one of the most famous Commodore Amiga publishers was Psygnosis. So if I go to Psygnosis, we've got the entire catalogue in WHD format, all of the games here, which is very cool, including the obvious games here, Shadow the Beast, which um, Psygnosis Publishing are known for. So if you want exit out of Amiga Game Selector, FN and F2 together, and this time we're going to open up Amiga Vision. So double left click Amiga Vision. And here we go. So another sub system within Pymega 4, which is just awesome. And again, we got lots more games here. We got some demos from the demo scene and you can select your games from here. Uh, FN and F2 together again. And we're going to go into Pymega 4. So I'm going to just show you how to navigate and how to actually play games through the main system here which is obviously desktop amiga a modern equivalent of it so what we're going to do is just use the bar at the bottom just here and if we go to iGame just open this up and i've opened this up twice and from here you can directly load your whd load games so at random i'm going to select alien free double left click on this one now, WHD load games are also going to pop up a little window and it's going to advise you which key to use in order to exit the game. Normally, it's F10. WHD load games are also equipped with cheats as well. So that's pretty cool stuff. So I can't play this one, as we know. I've got no controller connected. So let's just exit out of here again. So I'm going to press F10, which it advised us when we just booted up Alien 3. And that's going to bring us back into Pi Amiga. Okay, if you want to change video settings, I'm using a 4K TV here. What we need to do then is go to System Drive, and from here, we'll then find Preferences. If we go into Preferences, you've got lots of video options here. We can go to Set Screen Mode, and from Set Screen Mode, you can then change your resolution for use with Pi Amiga. And that's about it. So, like I said, if it wasn't the point of uploading Pi Amiga 3 just a few days ago, I would literally go in more depth with Pi Amiga 4. Uh, but since I've already uploaded that video, this is it. And Pi Amiga 4 looks very cool. But anyway, so if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.